I mean, here we were two weeks ago, we were at uh, middle school camp, and we asked the question, how many of you have cell phones? And well over half of the kids raised their hands. We are in a day where information is passed rapidly. We are in a day where we can call someone up really fast. We are in a day where we can just text a one-line joke or a one-line anything to someone. We are in a day where we want information and we want it fast. And so patience is something that sometimes we don't have. We are, in fact, impatient people. And so I think what happens here is that this is something that affects our spiritual life, affects our relationship with God, and affects our way of living out our faith. And so that can be a, a, a dangerous thing. We can bring our impatient behavior about uh, stuff going on at the workplace or stuff with our family and relationships, and we can bring that into our relationship with God. And all of a sudden we're saying, God, why is this not here? God, why aren't you working in my life right now? Or God, why am I still in the midst of this suffering? Why am I still looking for a job? Why am I still looking for uh, relationships that can nurture me and help me? And we can get really impatient with God. And that can be damaging to our faith and damaging to our relationship uh, with Christ. And so, and so we see here in a passage in James, which I love the book of James. I, I, I think the book of James is, is a book, if you ever need to just sit down and sort of read a, uh, a short book that, in the Bible that is talking about how to live out your faith, then James is, is that book, I think. And, and I love it how it helps you to figure out how to live out your life in a way that's going to be honoring to God. And so it's a good book, but I love how it, it ends. It ends with this focus on being patient. Being patient. And when James is writing this book, when James is writing this letter to these people, he is writing to them knowing that they have lived faithful lives and he's, he's helping them to live even stronger lives to Christ and helping them out. But he's also realizing that these people have been committed followers of Christ, committed in, in doing the mission of, of God, and they're starting to get impatient. They're starting to say, you know what? I have lived a holy life. I have lived the way that Christ taught me to live. And now, I'm starting to face suffering. And now I'm starting to face pain. And now I'm starting to face situations that I don't want to face. And what James is saying to them is to be patient. To be patient and wait on God. So this is James 5, 7 through 12. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmers wait for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord is coming, the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance, and you have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear by the heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be a no. In this scripture lesson, we see patience and perseverance is mentioned a lot. And we see that James is talking to to these people about Christ coming again. And how they are eager and wanting for that to happen. They want Christ to be present now. And James is saying, be patient. God is still working in the world, and so you continue to work in the world. Be patient and live it out. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. That's what, that's what it says in James 5.7. It says, be patient on the way in the coming of the Lord. And I think that's something that we need to be reminded. We need to be diligent. We need to be continuing going forth and being patient with God until Christ comes again. Then we see the illustration because James is probably talking to here a bunch of farmers, a bunch of people that are dealing with agriculture. And he's saying, he's using a farmer's illustration. 
you know, be patient on the rains. Be patient on the rains. Be patient on, uh, on the temperature that will help the corn fertile. I don't know all that stuff, Ted. You just help me out there. Just stop me. But anyway, but I did hear something this week. It's, it has to be at least 88 degrees to help germinate the corn. Is that right? No. Okay, great. I won't trust anyone ever again. Awesome. But anyway, be patient on the rain. Be patient on that. And the life of a farmer is, is, is a lot like that. It's just patience on taking what you get. On taking what you get. And that's how we are with God as well. And then we see this idea of perseverance. How it's brought up Job. And how Job had everything stripped away from him. From his family, to his friends, to possessions, to everything. And yet he was still patient in knowing that God was there. And God was going to take care of him. I think I... It's, it's really interesting to me how this patience is played out in lives and how it's played out in our faith and how James is telling these individuals that and to be people that are following God, you need to have patience. And I have an illustration here, I think. Uh, and I don't know about this, but I, I came across uh, these uh, seeds and they grow instantly. Alright? It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know if it... I can go to the next expo or something and share this, but anyway, but but watch this. I came across this, and so it said, just you know, put the water in there. So let's just watch, okay? I hope it's not too awkward, but just watch. Is everybody watching? Don't miss it. Stay focused there. Growing music, please. No, I'm joking. <laughs> watch. <laughs> Alright, it's been less than a minute. Oh, yes. Awesome. All the high school kids are standing up on their tiptoes. <laughs> Anything yet? Don't look back. Don't look back. Patience is tough. Oh my gosh. Are you guys just watching this? It can be tough. It's been less than a minute, but it feels a lot longer, doesn't it? We've got our attention right here, and maybe, maybe I just did a a very unpastor thing. I'm not sure, but there's no such thing as a magic seed. Actually, I didn't put any seeds in here at all. But I think that's something that we do. We just wait. We just watch. And we get so consumed into something that we have lost all patience. And sometimes we can be like that with God. We can place all this focus on one thing, on one, one particular situation, and everything else is gone. And then we just get mad. Then we just get upset that it's not working out the way that we think it should work out. And we just wait. Patience is hard. Patience is so hard. And I think it's interesting because what does patience look like? We look at 1 Corinthians. What does it say? Love is patient. Love is patient. When we are patient, we are expressing love. We're expressing the love of individuals, but we're also expressing love to God. And what happens with love? Love leads to understanding. And so with patience, we gain this idea of loving God, an idea of understanding God, and saying, what is? What is the purpose for me, Lord? Help me to be patient. Things are, are tough right now. I don't have a job. I don't know what's next around the corner. Raising kids can be difficult. Relationships are strained. 
Lord, give me patience.